Welcome to part three of our interview with Barbara Collar, also known as my mom. Someone wants to know whether I had red hair as a baby. Yes, very red hair. Actually, it was kind of it was more orange. It, it, when you were about two, it turned that pretty color and it stayed that. It, but it was it was really a, really a little lighter when you were an infant. How did I handle it when when I was out in public and people recognized me? Well, you handled it just fine. It, it was a very short period of time where you were a little miffed if, if no one had recognized you that day. You kind of expected it. I used to take you and your brother to the Saddlebred Horse Shows, and I had a specific class that I liked to focus on. And when that class was coming out, it only lasted about 10 minutes. But I would tell you both not to talk to me and not to bother me during this class. At one point, you would get up and take your brother by the hand and start walking through the, it was usually a basketball arena or a place kind of like that, really, where they had the horse shows. And you'd just walk up and down the, the stairs, and I could see where you were going. And you later told me that you just walked around until someone recognized you so you could have somebody to talk to, because you did like to talk. What was your favorite activity to do with me during the holidays? The holidays? Trim the tree. <laughs> What's your best advice for parents trying to get their child into acting? <laughs> it was a t t total accident for me. I have absolutely no advice. <laughs> well, wait, I do have one piece of advice. I had often said that one of the reasons my kids worked so much was because the producers knew that their mother could be counted on to stay away. Do you like watching The Waltons? I do. I watch it when I'm at home. When I watch it, it's different for me than for viewers who watch it. Right? Sure. I'm having a totally different experience. Um, I'm wondering, when you watch it, do you think you watch it just like anybody watching it, or are there things or moments that connect back to like your real life? or Because you've been on the set and you knew the people in real life. Yeah. S yes, sometimes, of course. That happens. I remember something that, that happened that's not in the... in the. Uh, but I've watched it so m much, Cammie. I know all practically by heart. And uh, obviously some of them I like better than others. The, the uh, earlier ones I like better because you, you guys were both so little. What was it like being on the set? It was boring. <laughs> I mean, it was boring if I was thinking about it as having to do it every day. It wasn't... The days I did it, it wasn't boring. Usually if, I, if you were going on location, you know, Bill Reynolds used to say, oh, Mom is here. We must be doing something fun today. <laughs> he used to give me a bad time about not being there. But when you went on location, I would usually find a way to go. Those days were always fun because they, they were all different, you know, and they had different food and different scenery and, and that sort of thing. But to, just to go up to the, to the set w was of really no interest to me. Do you have any specific memories of like meeting famous people as a result of the show? Yeah, I remember meeting um, Natalie Wood and Mar Anne Margaret and their spouses at an, it was either a People's Choice Award or an Emmys or something like that. Um, and when we went to those events, you were always running around interacting with people. One event we were getting ready to leave and Lily Tomlin was being interviewed by the press and you were sitting in her lap. And uh, I remember you at one event, you went up and took a paper umbrella out of an hors d'oeuvre and went over to Alan Alda. You held the paper umbrella up to him and he got down on his knees so he'd be eye level with you and you said, you have won the umbrella award. And he smiled and said, oh, thank you. This will come in so handy when it rains. So the things like that, yeah. Is there a Rock Hudson story? Yeah, there's a Rock Hudson story. It was the Hollywood Bowl raising money for the Will Gear Theatrica Botanicum. Is that right? Um, it was a Shakespeare fundraiser. And um, all the Hollywood stars were there. M most of them were in it. The Waltons was just a couple of years old. And they used the Walton cast to, to do part of the Shakespearean things that the three youngest Waltons were doing double, double to toil and trouble with the fire pit. And they had the, they had blue, they had the mule on the stage. So anyway, you were in it. After the show, all the cast was backstage and Rock Hudson and Gene Simmons came through. And I looked over and you were having a, you were about seven or eight. And you were having this conversation with Rock Hudson and Gene Simmons. And 
after you came over and I, I said, Cammie, do you know who's, who they were? Because you didn't have any idea who they were. I, I said, you, do you know who they were? And you said, yes. And I said, who? And, she, and you said, fans. <laughs> <laughs> what was your relationship with Michael Learned like? Oh, it was very good. I really admired her and I was very thankful for her because she, she really spent a lot of time with you. At one point, I actually went to her trailer. You were about 13 or 12 or 13 and I knew she was spending a lot of time with you because you talked about her a lot. And so I went over and I said, I, I would just want to thank you for spending so much time with Cammie. And, and she said, oh, I'm so happy to hear you say that. She said, I just love her. And I said, well, I think it's important for adolescent women to have another, a, a different mother role model because as they're pulling away from their mothers, it's good for them to have somebody to kind of fill that gap. And I said, I had an aunt who did that for me and, and I appreciate you doing it for Cammy. But I thought Michael Learned was Olivia Walton because she played the part so well. I mean, so I thought it was Olivia Walton giving you advice. She's got such a huge heart and, and she's such a maternal person. So she, she is like Olivia. No, well, yes and no. Yeah. Like she's, she's not Olivia. She's a sophisticated actress who, you know, traveled the world and lived in Germany as a child. I mean, she's, a, she's much more cosmopolitan yeah. and more emotional, I think, than Olivia. I mean, Olivia was very empathetic and feeling, but super grounded. And Michael's more of a, an actress, really. Yeah. So someone has actually asked how you felt about Ellen Corby and Will Gear's lifestyle, or if you were aware of it and if it concerned you. It didn't concern me at all. No. I'm trying to think how to ask a question that gets to this topic, which is that people are concerned about corruption, right? They're worried that if you send your children into the world and they're with people who are different than your own family, that that will damage them in some way. And as someone who seemed quite confident to send her children into the world, both in terms of letting us act on television and sending me to a middle school that had a very different like political frame of reference than your political frame of reference, what is it about how you think about parenting and your children and the world that results in you not being concerned about that stuff? Okay, I refer them to an episode of The Waltons, The Firestorm, where Richard talked about, if you burn this book, you'll never know what's in it. And I refer them to a, something that Olivia Walton said in the episode, must have been the teacher that you fell in love with teach birthday. And Michael Learned said, I think our children get in trouble when they don't know enough. So I think the more they can learn, which is obviously needs to be age appropriate, the better off they're going to be. What book are you currently reading? <laughs> Leanne Moriarty's newest book. I've read all of her books. Did you get any souvenirs from the set? No. I have a wonderful photograph of CBS's 50th anniversary special, and I have it framed in my apartment. But I don't have anything from the set that I can think of. Did you ever act? I had the lead in my junior class play in high school. How do you think being on the Waltons affected me? Am I different than I would have been if I'd never gone into television? Benefits, disadvantages? I have no way of knowing. <laughs> <laughs> How did me being on television change your life? Well, it made it a whole lot busier and more hectic, and, and but it had a lot of fun, a lot of things that I wouldn't, wouldn't have done. And I was adamant about being able to choose what I was going to do and what I wasn't going to do, which is why you had a babysitter. We saw that picture of the mothers on the set. You weren't on the set every day. Why was that? Because I didn't go every day. I had a job, and I my job was very important to me. My job was more important to me than your job was important to me. And uh, so I was rarely there. Bill Reynolds was right. I only came when something fun was happening. You asked a question about the Ferris wheel, and if I was worried about you, the Ferris wheel. And I wasn't worried about you, but I had I didn't know, really, that you, know, you were going to be hung up in a harness and thrown around. I read the script, of course, but I guess I didn't realize that that's what they were going to do. And uh, I never heard any complaints from you. You know, I don't remember you even talking about the fact that you were in a harness. You're talking about trusting people, like trusting my Walton cast members to kind of keep an eye out for me. What about uh, crew members? Were there people who you also felt like you could rely upon? And 
I think the crew was very fond of you. I think everybody there, they I mean, they thought you were their baby because you were. And they watched you grow up. And I think you had just a whole cadre of people, cast and crew, fans even, you know, who were who would, were looking out for you. And I also had a lot of faith in your own ability to maneuver through this world. Someone wants to know what your favorite ride at Disneyland is. And if you have any memories of taking me to the Magic Kingdom. My favorite ride at Disneyland, I have two of them. Small World and Peter Pan. When you were little, we lived 15 minutes from Disneyland. And I had worked at Disneyland in college. So I had a lot of opinions about taking children to Disneyland. I think parents take them when they're way too young. They stay way too long. And the kids get tired and fussy, and the parents are going, I spent all this money to come here, and you, by God, are going to have a good time. And that's a recipe for disaster. (laughs) So what we always did was we would take you and your brother to Disneyland on a Sunday morning when everybody else was in church, and we would stay until people started coming around noon, we get our hands stamped, and we go home and put you down for a nap, and then go back at night when it's a whole different experience. So we were only there like three hours at a time. I mean, I would also add that, that the ticketing was different when I was little. Yeah. Like you didn't have to pay hundreds of dollars to get in the gate. Was there an admission charge? I don't remember. I think it was, I think there was a low, low admission charge, and then you bought tickets. Yeah. Bought tickets. So it was easier to go for three hours if you were if you lived in town because it wasn't as much of a money commitment either. Oh, that's right. Now we live in LA and we're like, I don't know, should we go to Disneyland? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta float alone. <laughs> Where did I get my red hair from, Mom? Down both sides of the family. It skipped generations, at least in our family. I have an aunt with hair exactly the same color on my mother's side. And then on my father's side, his mother, my grandmother, had red hair. And on your father's side, your dad's grandmother had red hair. But then it was on the other side. Two? Um, Gail's a redhead. And Ginger. Yeah, Gail and Ginger, but they're on Bubby's side. There's there's somebody on the Cotler side that had red hair, too. But There must be, because my Jewel and I have a first, second, second cousin? Second cousin, whose daughter is a redhead. A big thank you to everyone who posted questions for my mom on my Facebook page. If you aren't following my Facebook page, there's a link to it in the description below.